green card and grab a seat. Great fella, and coach, great to see you. At this time, we welcome Alex Caraban, Stefan Castle, and Donovan Klingen from UConn, along with the head coach, Dan Hurley. We'll ask Coach Hurley to open things up with a statement, and then we're going to look for questions for our student athletes after the opening statement. Coach. Yeah, I mean, much respect, obviously, to, uh, you know, to Nate and Alabama and, and their, their season and just where, they, where, where have they been uh, you know, the, since he's gotten there. I mean, they're, they're top of sport in terms of quality of their program. And, uh, you know, we, we were able finally just to, uh, you know, defend well enough in the second half, get the three-point line defense under control there, and, and uh, obviously executed late, and uh, we're able to get that kind of separation. But, um, you know, they were really, really hard to guard, um, and I, I, was, I was thrilled with the way we, uh, way we defended and the way we closed the game out. Looking for questions for our student athletes from UConn down in front, Dave. Dave Ward, this Hearst Connecticut Media. Donovan, how does it feel to, to be, you know, one win away from history that I know you've kind of talked, you guys have talked about most of the season? And the, the wrap on your hand, can you explain that today? Um, uh, the first part, um, I mean, yeah, we, you know, everyone came to UConn to try to be a part of history, and, you know, we're one step closer to our goal. Um, but none of us in this locker room are satisfied, and we know we have a lot of work to do. We have a big matchup on Monday. And my hand, you know, just has bruised it the other day. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Staying up front on the left side. Uh, Stefan, tied your career high. I'm curious, uh, first of all, if you were a little frustrated sitting out the last five minutes with the foul trouble. And second of all, if uh, you were kind of aware that you were feeling it from the get-go or if it just kind of came naturally. Um, I mean, yeah, sitting out, I'd, I mean, clearly I didn't want to sit out, but um, I mean, I believe in our depth of our team. So, I mean, I wasn't worried at all for me sitting out. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I had it going. Uh, I mean, my teammates, they put me in great position to be successful. And uh, I mean, uh, I saw a couple of shots fall in uh, early and I mean, I, I just had it going. If you have a question for Alex or Stefan or Donovan, please raise your hand. We'll go down front with Zach. Uh, Zach Brazil New York Post. Donovan, what do you, what do you think about facing Edie? probably the most dominant player in the sport the last two years, national player of the year the last two years. Um, just are you excited? Are you looking forward to, to playing against a guy like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. You know, you, you play at this level to play big-time matchups, big-time games. And, you know, I got a lot of respect for Zach Eady. He's a great player, um, you know. And, you know, my, me and my team are going to get ready to battle and give everything we got on Monday. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from UConn. Go down front, Dom. Alex, when the team is hitting threes like they were in the first half, uh, what what type of feel sets in on your on your side? Do you get frustrated with it that you can't pull away? They keep responding with threes, or do you feel like sooner or later they're going to cool off? How, how are you approaching that when that's going on? Yeah, we weren't surprised by it at all. We just had to stay together, and um, we just had to tighten up on the defensive end. We thought. They were making threes because we were gifting them open threes. So um, we thought in the second half we had to do a better job, better job of disrupting and um, you know making sure that they don't get open threes off. And I think we did a great job there in the second half. On the right side up front, back right microphone. Stefan Sam Lance with Adam Zagori and Zagsblog.com. Those who know you know that you very rarely kind of get emotional, show emotion on the court. But after that alley oop dunk, you you were pretty animated out there and let Alabama know a little bit. What was it that kind of brought that out of you? Um, I just sensed that we had started to spark a run. You know, I was just trying to get my teammates, you know, just to have a little energy on the court. And, I mean, I mean, it was it was a good dunk. It was a great pass by T. New, so I got kind of fired up for it. Back up front with Zach. Um, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Alex, it's now 11 straight tournament games. You guys have won by double figures. You're making this look easy. What, why do you think you guys have had such consistent domination in this tournament the last two years, and why have you been able to just kind of pick up where you left off this year from last year? 
I think um, we just stay true to our identity. It's something that the coaching staff preaches every day. If we just focus on the defense and the rebounding, then you know everything else could go our way. And um, it really starts on the defensive end with us. We can get out in transition, and then offensively, we're just so unselfish, and you know we'll pass up good shots or great shots. We just have so much trust in one another. And then it's Coach Hurley. I mean, he never let the returners be complacent with what happened last year. And the new guys, they're hungry for you know what we did last year and to have that feeling. So um, you know, there's no let off. Any further questions for the student athletes from UConn? There's one on the left. Yeah, Kevin Sweeney, SI, for either Alex or Donovan. Obviously, you guys have seen what Steph can do offensively in practice, but to see him be this assertive and dominant on that end of the floor in a game like this, you know, were you surprised? What, what did it mean to the team today? We'll ask Alex to take that first, then Donovan. No, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, we see it in practice, like you said, every day. And, um, you know, we always want to be aggressive. You have the opportunity. And he had the opportunity at the beginning of the game to be aggressive, and he took advantage of it. So it's not really a surprise to us. I mean, we know how talented of a player he is on both ends of the floor. So, I mean, it's not a surprise at all. Donovan, you can wrap things up here. Yeah, like Alex said, it's not surprising at all. He's, he's not like any other freshman. Um, you know, he's out there to do whatever his team needs, you know, for him to do to win and you know he's you know one of the, one of the best on on ball defenders that you'll see and you know he puts a lot of work in and you know he's the most unselfish player on his team did you have a quick follow Seth? go ahead stuff did did you notice that them kind of playing off you a little it looked kind of like their game plan was you know make you beat them especially early uh yeah i noticed it like the first play of the game when we were trying to run a set and the guy was guarding me in the paint so i just I try to take advantage of it early. That, I mean, did that motivate you at all? That kind of that them not really respecting your jump shot and kind of daring you to score? Um, I I wouldn't say it was motivation. I would just say it was uh, a kind of disrespect on their end to to just to guard that that far back. So I mean, I took advantage of it early. I saw the ball going early, and I, I feel like it kind of sparked a, a good night for me. We want to congratulate and thank Alex, Stefan, and Donovan for joining us down here. Congratulations again, guys. We'll see you back here tomorrow. We're going to take questions for Coach Early in just a moment. UConn student athletes are headed back to the locker room, which is open. We're going to take the first question for Coach Hurley with Eddie on the right side. Okay. Hey, Coach. Uh, Eddie Pels from AP. I'm just wondering, there, there's coaches who come up after they lose, and they're like, they were just, you know, they were just better. There was nothing we could do about it. I was curious, have you had a moment tonight during the tournament, during the last two years, where you ever looked at another team that was out there and go, I don't, I don't have an answer? Well, um, I mean, at, at different, you know, points, you know, different points of the game, um, you know, they were, they were eight for 11 from three in the first half, which you know, we wanted to keep their three-point attempts to under 22 for the game. Um, you know, the problem was, you know, we were on target for the attempts, but they made eight. And and I, I think the feeling in the just with the group is that, uh, you know, it's just it, it's body blows, it's body blows, it's you know, continue to guard, continue to rebound, execute our offense, and then the, eventually the, the, there'll be a breaking point opportunity, um, you know, that will present itself, um, especially in this tournament for us. We've just played so well. Back of the room in the center. Connor Sargent, the Daily Campus. Dan, I, we already heard from Alex on this issue, but I was wondering if you could touch upon what you told your team at the, at the end of the half, because, I mean, Alabama did shoot, like you mentioned, 8 of 11 from 3, and yet you guys were still up by 4. So what was the message? Were you guys feeling good and confident after the end of the first half? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought we, you know, they, they're a great offensive team. I mean, they're, they're, they're like the hardest team to guard. Illinois had a, had a great offense. But th these guys were harder for us to guard just because of their one-on-one -on -one abilities. They just had so many players that uh, they could beat you off the dribble, make a three. Um, you know, Nelson, I mean, you see his talent level. He's an NBA player. I mean, like, modern, mismatched, positionless guy. You know, Pringle. Um, that's a very talented team. We just, you know, we felt like if we just kind of stayed into them and, you know, j just kept doing what we do, it sounds like coach talk, but... Our identity is 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 uh, to be pretty relentless, and you know we might not break you for you know 18 minutes, 25 minutes, it, you know, but at some point, 
if what we're doing at both ends and on the backboard is at a high level, it just becomes hard for the other team to sustain it. On the right side, by the column. Tennessee, MEC 13 in Birmingham. All week, Bama fans were saying we got to shoot so many threes. Were you surprised by the game plan with Nate and his team? To shoot a lot of threes? Well, yeah, I, I mean, they, they wanted to shoot them. I, I thought we, 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 we went over everything and chased them off the line and, you know, tr tried, to, tried to funnel them in, into the mid-range, even though it's hard to do because they're such great coaches and Nate's such a great coach and their system of offense – it, it, it's the hardest to guard of you know, that we faced this year because it's got elements of Xavier's transition game, which is incredible, uh, Marquette's ball screen game, which is you know something else, and then Creighton's three point shooting, all, all converged into one game here for us. So uh, we knew it was going to be tough. Up front on the right, Don Memori. Dan, I think when Tristan hit the three to make it a 13-point game, you turned and, and looked into the crowd and you did the the th right. Yeah, and just is I used that, to do this, yeah. but Carmelo retired. <laughs> so. is, is that when you finally kind of exhaled and felt safe, or was it tense up to that point? Yeah, because you don't feel safe with, with that offense out there. Plus. You've seen enough games as a coach to see people find a way to lose a double-figure lead with a minute or so to go. But, you know, like when you turn the ball over as infrequently as we do, and, you know, I know we sometimes get some crap for the batting gloves and the, you know, the dribbling warm-up that we do that's kind of, you know, high school-ish in, in a way and very fundamental. But if you look at the way that we take care of the ball, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's rare. You know, it's, it, it's rare. Up front on the left. Dan, uh, Donovan earlier said Stefan Castle's not like any other freshman. He's the most unselfish player on the team. Can you speak to both those two things and also when you knew you were getting that? <clears throat> yeah, so um, you, know, you knew r right away in the recruiting process because of how quickly and decisively he made a decision, you know, um, you know based on, like, the things that really matter, the culture. Um, the connection with the staff, you know, all the things that we do at UConn. And obviously he's seen some guards have some great success with us and over the years. So you just knew when you recruited him. And then when you got to the first practice and everything, um, you know, whether you're, you know, whether you ripped him or encouraged him, everything was yes, coach. And he's just such a pleaser. And, um, you know, he's, his value at the next level, obviously you see it on game night, but you know, a lot of NBA teams, they come through and watch us practice where he even has the ball in his hands even more, where he gets to show all the things he could do that you don't always see on game night. Third row on the left this is the back left microphone. Hey, Coach. Uh, Evan Mia Cow, EvanMiaCow.com. Um, you guys average almost one 10-0 scoring run per game this season, and tonight you had four separate 7-0 runs. What is it about your team that allows you to take control of games so quickly like that? Yeah, you know, we flirted the whole year with 50% with, with for the field. Um, I think from an efficiency standpoint, we've been the number one offense in the country. And we've kind of passed that, you know, uh, back and forth with Purdue and, and, and Illinois and Alabama throughout the year. So, you know, the offense is super efficient. You know, we're, we're, we're top four in defense. You know, we, we rebound the heck out of the ball. So, um, you know, just, uh, you know, we, we could bunch up stops and then, you know, we, we score a lot, so <laughs> you get stops, you score. Um, and I think we got a lot of confidence, and I think, you know, th there's, a, there's a factor with teams now that you know, have seen us play where, you know, when we get on a run, I think it's, uh, you know, it's disheartening for the other team because they've, they've seen it. They've seen us do it a lot. Back to the room on the left side. Coach Aiden Blank, News 12, Connecticut as your second straight national championship. I'm wondering what similarities and differences you see between this year's team and last year's team. Um, just that, that same, you know, re relentless, relentless, you know, effort and just a meticulous approach to, you know, to, to performance and winning and um, game planning with Luke and Kamani two of the best in the country at what they do um, in every facet. So I think, 
you know, you like Jordan's different player than, than Cam and Steph's a different player than Andre Jackson and the bench is a little bit different, but you know, the culture, the preparation, the commitment to every aspect of the game so that we keep ourselves as bulletproof as possible um, in, in this tournament, which is hard. We, we make a hard tournament look easy. It's crazy. I want to congratulate Coach Hurley on making the title game once again. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Coach.